whenever you shoot a Hellfire missile at someone and you kill them, this is just in general, at least in Afghanistan, they only have, like, so long to bury them, according to their religion. I don't remember what it is. But generally how it would go is we'd be, you know, flying above and find our target, shoot the missile, explodes, people die. And then, like, immediately after that explosion would happen, the town villagers would come running out, gather up all the pieces that were left, and then immediately have a funeral. And the first time I saw that was, like, the first day of the job as a military contractor. And that was a holy f moment. Like, what the f am I doing? But, yeah, that was a weird thing that I didn't know, and I don't think a lot of people know. That, yeah, it's like all the villagers, they come running out, gather up body parts, go have a funeral, bury him, and then that's just standard practice. Like, that happens enough to where they don't, they're not even worried about another missile shooting them. They just go pick up the body pieces, have a funeral, and then that's just every day. F***ing weird. Did you ever have to use a sword gun in the military? No, not really. Uh, not, you know, not very often. It doesn't really come up. I guess their technology yeah. hasn't advanced that far yet. <laughs> Recently, after I messaged you, I went and looked at your stuff, and I, I like it. It's kind of like a Humans of New York type thing you got going on, but <laughs> yeah. in VR chat. That is essentially my uh, life right now. It's See, that's dope. Hell. <laughs> what were you doing before you joined the Army? Uh, Air Force, excuse you. Um, we don't talk about the Army. <laughs> that is an insult uh, okay, now we know to for someone. Sure you're in the Air Force. <laughs> I mean, the Air Force actually split off from the Army in like 1947 or whatever it was, but I mean, I'm probably going to offend this if anyone hears this, but offend at least a couple of people. The Army requires about here. Air Force is, I don't know if that's lifted up or not, but up here. Currently, I'm 28, I think. Yeah, I'm 28. And it, it kind of, you know, it, you, stop, you stop remembering, I feel like. Does that not happen to everybody? I think I, I'm you about to turn. Air Force? Yeah, you do. It's all coming but, together. <laughs> you know, I had like these big dreams and aspirations to like go off to college, and I got accepted to like my dream college or whatever. And then I got there, and I went to go pick up all my paperwork, and they gave me the bill, and it was like fifty grand for a year, and there was no way I was going to be able to pay for that. So. uh went and talked to a recruiter that day and i always wanted to get like a a top secret security clearance that was like my main goal um because i was like man that'd be cool you know learn like the nation's secrets you know like some edgy little teenager <laughs> yeah. you obama he said the he said the same thing yeah it was really man, like seeing obama as a, a virtual reality anime girl <laughs> you always wanted to join the air force like since you were a kid no 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 not at all i mean i was a a, a super hipster emo kid like, I graduated in 2008, whenever, like, Taking Back Sunday was all the rage. By the way, a great band. Still one of my favorite bands. But I flat ironed my hair. I had a lip ring. I wore skinny jeans. And so I was probably one of the furthest people you would have ever expected to have joined the military. And most of my close circle of friends, they were, they were all pretty shocked whenever I told them I was joining the military. What did you originally apply to college for? Like, what was your, your dream college you got in? Uh, it was a Texas A&M University. I wanted to go to the School of Architecture. That dream was kind of crushed. <laughs> I never really thought about joining the Air Force, but I also always kind of like had these like ideas of being like a badass, you know, which I thought at the time that's what the Air Force was. Spoiler, it's not. You get to play volleyball with Tom Cruise? <laughs> that is the Navy. But we got the wrong guy today. <laughs> <laughs> All of my questions are about Tom Cruise. We had a we had a huge family. I'm like a I'm one of seven children. So while my parents made a lot of money, it was split very thin across, you know, a lot of kids. That was one of the reasons why I couldn't pay for school because they made too much money for me to get financial aid, but they didn't make enough to actually help me pay for school. All your friends are going off to college, they got accepted and everything and then you're like well, shit. First, I actually originally go to the Marines. But yeah, so I was going to join the Marines. I was in at the recruiter's office. In this complex that we're in, the recruiter's complex, there's an Army, a Navy, a Marines, and an Air Force all, like, right beside each other. You know, it's like in a mall. So they're all, like, right next to each other. I was talking to the Marine guy. A old man and his daughter come up and sit next to me while we're waiting for the, uh, for the recruiter's office to open up. 
And he asked me, he was like, are you joining the Marines? They were sitting in front of the Air Force uh, door. And I was like, yeah, I'm gonna think I'm gonna join the Marines pretty soon. I have a ship date, I'm ready to go. He said, well, I used to be in the Marines. And I was like, okay. And he's like, I would never let my daughter here join the Marines because the Marines treat you like shit. And I, as me about to join the Marines, you know, I am like, oh my God, tell me more. And he said whenever he went to, whenever he would deploy and he would go to like a military uh, installation, like an Air Force one, the Air Force, you left your trays on the table and they had people come and pick them up for you. And when you deployed, you slept in air conditioned tents, which was true. <laughs> and uh, at that moment, it was kind of an easy choice. I went and talked to the Air Force recruiter that day and started that whole process. There's a whole thing about how recruiters lie, and it's 100% true. They will try to tell you everything uh, and to try and get you on that plane or on that bus to go to wherever they're trying to get you, because you're just a number to them, you know, you're not anything. This is from the Marine side, whenever I was going to join the Marines originally. You can join the military under what's called a guaranteed contract, meaning that when you get done with your boot camp uh, in whatever branch you're in, that you get to pick your job beforehand and that is going to be your job no matter what at least for your first enlistment i didn't know that was a thing at all when i first started this whole journey and when i was with going going the marines he said that no you, we just put you in there every marine's a rifleman first and we'll pick your job for you you'll get it to pick from a list or whatever afterwards that was the biggest lie like that's a life-altering decision that is that a lot of people don't understand. Another pretty big one is that whenever you are, you're in, when you're about to join the military, you're in what's called the delayed enlistment program. Uh, it's short for DEP or DEP. And legally, DEP doesn't mean jack shit. You could, you could quit literally a second before you step on the airplane or the bus or however you're getting to boot camp, and you will have no legal repercussions at all. They don't say that very much because obviously they would have a lot more people quitting. Their job is to try and like, you know, hook you in and they get rated based on how many numbers they get. So yeah, they don't mention that very much. But yeah, you can, if you're ever going to join the military, if either of you are ever interested, you can say fuck you up until the moment you get to boot camp, pretty much. Is everyone an anime they girl have... on that too? Okay, I will say this. The Air Force has the most, eh, maybe. Air Force and Navy have the most weebs, I would say. I, there was a, a furry convention on base one time, which was super weird. I mean, this is like 2011, so this is like peak furry, you know, and like peak furry hysteria. So when that happened, everybody on base was like, oh, my God, did you see all the furries? Imagine being on a submarine with someone for six months, and then all of a sudden, all of them are furries. <laughs> What's the next Stephen King novel coming out, by the way? I got an advanced copy. DEP is a very involved process. You have to, like, go to all of these meetings. You have to go get checked out at a place called MEPS, which is, like, the Military Entrance Screening Processing Station or something. And you got to show a guy your butthole, and it's a whole thing. You got to do that twice, too. <laughs> it's a, a doctor. Like, he has to check your butthole. And mine was an English guy, so I guess that was nice. Was he very proper and polite to you? <laughs> he, he was, yeah. You don't know this going in there. Like, I didn't know I was going to have to show this guy my butthole. And so I'm, like, standing there naked. And uh, that was already kind of weird. And then he, he go, walks around behind you, and he has a pen in his hand. And he goes, place your hands here and here and spread. And bend over, and that's what you do. And it's, it's fucking weird. Did this come up later in the Air Force? Like, is this something that they need to know? <laughs> <laughs> I think they're checking for hemorrhoids is what, they, what they're doing, but... Oh, as, uh... I guess it's the chair fork. <laughs> yeah. Is this something that's, like, set around the, the Air Force dudes? Yeah, not really. This is probably... I think this is the first time I've talked about the English guy. I don't... I, 
I don't think I've even told my wife about that. Wait, so no you've problem. never corroborated with anyone that this wasn't a scam of some sort? <laughs> no. <laughs> no, I haven't. No. He doesn't even work there. I don't think you saw a military doctor. <laughs> it's uh, definitely a comfort. I mean, I, I feel it was an American accent. I don't know if I would have went through with it that day. My parents are very... I don't know if you've ever met a Southern Baptist, but my whole family is very Southern Baptist. So joining the military is almost the same as Jesus coming back for the second time. Joining the military, you, oh God, you're a fucking hero. You think you're doing the best thing in the world. It's a fantastic choice. Go getting to die for your country? Holy shit, what better thing could happen to you? Well, so the from the... <laughs> That's the general area that I'm from. It's a great town. They just... They're, 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 you know, they're old school country rednecks. My church, oh, they were so proud too. It was great. It was fantastic. I had three really good friends that were in my dorm. Uh, we have dorms in the Air Force. We don't have barracks. They call them dorms. They're essentially barracks. And they were all gay. And they were some of the coolest people I ever met. You know, that just like kind of blew my fucking world. Because being where I from, I was from, Muslims, gay people. We had, we had gay people, but not a lot. Um, I was like... Who am I to say that? This guy is wrong, and I'm right. They seem to think that they're right. So, uh, no, I met a lot of people, you know, I made a lot of friends that were Muslim or, you know, just all this random, these random religions I'd never heard of because I'm from very small town, Texas. We got to hang out with some really cool people and meet some really nice, you know, like people that are good. You can just tell when someone's a good person, regardless of their religion or whatever. Man, this probably sounds really weird coming from someone wearing a penguin suit. No, this is par for the course now. It's it would good. be more disturbing to talk about this with a real person at this point. <laughs> so you served with three gay men at a time when Don't Ask, Don't Tell was still kind of like the law of the land. Yeah, that dude, that, that was some crazy shit. It was a gay guy, two gay girls. This is something about the military that is different from how, at least the U.S. military, from how outsiders perceive it. People in the military don't give a fuck. No one gave two shits that they were gay. Everyone fucking knew it. Like, at least the guy. The guy was super flamboyant. No one cared a fuck. Everyone loved him. He was a kick-ass at his job. You could depend on him for work. And he always came through with all of his shit. So people in the military did not give two shits about if you were gay. This was kind of way before, like, the trans kind of kicked off. So And I kind of missed that whole bo uh, boat whenever that started becoming in the news in the military. I mean, I'm sure there were some that did care. I'm not going to say there there wasn't but from the group that i knew in my small area i guess that's kind of the point of don't ask don't tell though isn't it like you don't ask then don't tell but everyone fucking knew but uh certain groups find their ways into certain jobs at least in the air force your good old boys they all end up being mechanics or working on helicopters or working on airplanes as like a mechanic girls tend to end up or females end up going into medical career fields a lot of time people that do well enough on their tests uh end up in intel hey yo right here at least on the enlisted side uh on the officer side it's totally different they their shit does not stink if you were to ask an officer you want to go into your opinion of officers <laughs> uh my job was to train pilots how not to get shot down best weapons to use and all these other different things so it required me to have more interaction with an officer than your normal rank and file airman would and whenever you come across an officer the enlisted member has to salute first and then the officer re renders the salute second i've run, run into an officer before where i forgot to salute early on in my career and the dude flipped his shit on me i also had an officer thump my stripes before in front of a commander and thankfully the commander stood up for me which was pretty cool your wife was your best friend before you joined the military and you proposed after you got out yeah that's kind of, actually that's one of my favorite stories i joined the military and she was like super i told you i like mission trips she was super into mission trips so much so that she did this program called Mission Year, which is like a program here in the United States. You basically go and live in an impoverished community for a year. And she went and lived in Georgia for a whole freaking year. After she got through with that, I would come home and you know we'd visit and hang out and stuff. Eventually we had a we had a really a really close friend of ours ended up like passing away. We came back and we were hanging out one time and we were just talking and stuff. And you know we started kinda I started like talking about future and everything and we I don't know just kind of worked out that way like things uh 
things went great. It was awesome. I wanted to marry her since I was like 16. Yeah, it. Uh, I tricked her into doing it, and it's uh, been pretty great ever since. You're in boot camp for eight weeks. That was some shit. I had super long hair going into it, you know, and like my hair was like down to my shoulders, right? And that's when they shave your head off, your hair off, your head off. Yeah, that's when they shave your hair off. So that was a shock, and I knew it was gonna happen, but it uh, it still sucked. And yeah, then you get uh, you get conditioned, is the nice word, uh, how to be a soldier. You have to get all these kinds of shots and shit, and it's it's pretty. I mean, the penicillin's the only one that really hurts, but yeah, that sucked. But no, yeah, boot camp uh, overall, it was it wasn't a bad experience. I thought it was it was fun, like in a weird way. They tear gas you at one point. That's a fun time. You're all like dressed up in your gear, right? It's called uh, your mop gear, and uh, you have like a gas mask on. You have like this super fucking hot Kim suit on that protects you from chemical attacks. Gloves, little booties that cover your feet. You go into a room with like all your friends you're all like in a square right and in the center is this like little pit thing and they put tear gas in there and fill the room with tear gas you have your gas mask on one by one you have to take your gas mask off try to say a reporting statement in the gas you only make it to like two words before it hits you you know it's just to get you to see what it feels like essentially which honestly i don't know if that serves a point it doesn't really happen so much in the air force because all air force boot camps are in texas but in other boot camps, Marines in the Army, one of their favorite jokes to say about people from Texas is, there's only two things that come from Texas, steers and queers, and you ain't got any horns or whatever the fuck they say. It's so fucking dumb. <laughs> Glad you got out. I'm still in Texas. Oh, my condolences. If you can, like, handle someone yelling at you, it's not that big of a deal. Because, uh, I mean, that's what they do. They yell a lot. And they try and like to like get you to break under pressure, like screaming at you when you're firing a rifle or loading a gun or cleaning a weapon or giving your reporting statement. It's all a mental thing, right? It's only a mental game, really. There is the physical aspect of like, you just have to be in like generally good shape when you first get there. And by the time you're done, you'll be in pretty good shape. As long as you can handle a grown man screaming at you, boot camp's not that bad. I know and there's gonna be a lot of people that are gonna see this and they're gonna be like, well, that's because you went to Chair Force boot camp. You didn't go to the Marines. Marine boot camp's way harder. Watch. Oh man, this is. I forgot about this story. There was. I mean, there's always someone who tries to commit suicide at boot camp. Like every time. Okay, so in the Air Force dorms, we have to use these floor polishers to clean the floors every every Sunday. You have to take all of the bunk beds out. These are 60-man bays. You take every single bunk bed out of these 60-man bays. There's two of them. And you have to strip the entire floor of its current polish, which is an insanely difficult task to do. This is just a long way to tell you that we have a floor polisher and it has a really, really, really long cord because it has to go around these two giant bays while you're polishing. One day, uh, <laughs> one day we're exercising underneath and our brother flight is next to us and a floor polisher drops from the window and crashes next to them and just shatters. I don't know if this is a common thing. I was only there once, but they knew what happened. They ran right up there, and there was a 18-year-old kid who had tied the extension cord, or the cord from the polisher around his neck, trying to throw the polisher out the window to hang himself, because it weighs a lot. But the cord's really long, and the drop's not that far, so there was a lot of slack. So he didn't do it. Like, he, he failed, thankfully. But yeah, so that happened. Another kid tried to kill himself in a locker. He like tried to suffocate himself in a locker or something, but that was just like hearsay we heard from the other people there. That was some pretty terrible shit. <laughs> that was that happens that happened pretty early on and we were just like, "Holy shit. Like what the fuck did I sign up for?" I guess for some people it is bad. I guess I should probably cl reclarify that. Some people it is pretty bad. For a lot of people, I don't think it's very bad. I know that UFO isn't necessarily like it means something from another planet, but have you ever seen anything fishy where you I have no idea what that is in the sky? No, um, I don't know. <laughs> oh, by the way, I meant to ask you this at the beginning of this, but how do you say your name? Is it Sire Moore or is it Sir Moore? 
I leave it up to like artistic interpretation. His That's lips uh, are tighter I, than yours. <laughs> it's like any job, really. You wake up, like I woke up at six. I had to be in the office by seven, uh, so that I could do my morning Todd brief, which is a thread of the day briefing. So it'd be like, oh hey, MiG 29s. This is what's cool about MiG 29s. They can shoot you from this far away. You should stay out of their range. That would be like, that's what a threat of the day briefing is. It's basically recognizing an aircraft, knowing its capabilities, avoiding getting shot down, what to do if you do get shot down. What do you do if you get shot down? I mean, you tuck your head between your legs and kiss your ass goodbye. Always comes back to the ass. Like the military probably has more licenses for PowerPoint than anywhere else in the world. Because that's all you do. Yeah, you yep. spend uh, like a hundred trillion dollars on war without greasing Microsoft's palms. How many valid licenses of WinRAR have you got going on in there? That is one line we do not cross. There's yep. still some integrity in the armed forces. <laughs> My role is to be there for pilots. Just, I worked in what's called the mission planning cell most of the time, uh, which is where the mission gets planned and you would be there to say hey no that's wrong you don't want to fly this route because this thing can see you from this far away so you want to avoid this thing and go that way instead and then also it would be like what are you trying to do here do you want to go down this far into the ground with your bomb or do you want to go this far into the ground with your bomb and then have it blow up and so my job would be to say, hey, you want to use this weapon, that'll get that job done for you. I got to do cool shit and not die. That's what everybody's trying to do in their life. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. After active duty tour is up, uh, I get out and now I have this top secret security clearance as a uh, civilian. And it's good for like two years after that. Like you can get a job within that amount of time and you get to keep your security clearance. So that was the goal. I was like, hell yeah, it's time to get a job. We're going to make the big bucks. And I got hired on as a military contractor uh, working with the uh, Predators, the UAVs, you know. I didn't have to keep my hair shaved. I could grow a, some semblance of a beard and uh, I could wear normal people clothes clothes uh which was like probably the best part so is job. this like the same as being a mercenary uh, that's another name that people call it yeah military contractors are mercenaries or mercenaries are military contractors you're killing people for money for hire as a civilian your job's still the same we worked hand in hand with uh active duty we shot missiles at people every fucking day it was fucking insane so is this like a private company you're working with how does it work now private company hired by the government so yeah and are you able to say the company's name i'm probably not gonna say that <laughs> why would the government hire this private company as opposed to just having their own men handle the job no fucking idea but they pay you so much money for it so i didn't really care because my job definitely could have been done by an enlisted person that was active duty. I didn't ask questions because they were paying me a bunch of money. So it was, uh, you know, I didn't want to ruin a good thing. I mean, I love the military. The military was dope. Military contracting, though, was some crazy shit. Uh, there's definitely been some things that I wish I wouldn't have been part of uh, when I was a contractor. My job was to get to know these people that were hunting down and to learn their lives and learn their patterns of life and all that shit. And I relay that to my pilots, who then sh shoot these people with Hellfire missiles. And yeah, I mean, that's just no way around that. If you're a human being, I feel like that's a pretty shitty spot to be in. You're killing people. There's no way around it. Um, but yeah, that's uh, it just it just sucks all around. But they pay you a lot, so maybe that's enough to assuage your your conscience enough to keep doing it for a long time. How do you square all that away with sort of your very religious background and you clearly have a good perspective on this is it is you just sort of push it out of your mind that my job was to kill people for a few years oh no 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 i'm not very religious anymore at this point anyway uh you just have to ask yourself do i think this is right uh does this you know does this make me a bad person and if the answer comes to yes then i think you quit uh if no then you can keep doing it Something kind of weird though, you know, uh, I don't know if y'all remember like Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3, you know, like the Predator cam, whenever you get like a five kill streak. Y'all remember oh, that? Yeah. That is like spot on. Like it is, it looks so similar. And I think that's how a lot of people actually kind of uh, 
kind of get through that process is because it looks like a video game on the monitor scope you're watching, right? It's very dehumanized, a very dehumanized, detached version of reality of what you're shooting a missile at. So did you end up quitting? Oh, yeah. Not of my own volition at first. It was during one of the government shutdowns that Ted Cruz, uh, your guys' native, that he caused you're in... Yeah, thank you. Yeah, he caused one of the shutdowns, and all the military contractors got on hiatus for uh, a month or two or whatever. And during that time, you know, I had a, a lot of time to kind of, like, reflect and be like, holy shit, is this what I want to keep doing? This is some heavy shit, right? That was when I talked with my wife, and uh, I decided I would rather go to school and not do that anymore. Uh, it just it wasn't worth the money, uh, not for, like, my mental health or anything like that. It's just a, it's a hard thing to do kill people like it fucked me up a little maybe but i don't know I, honestly I, i've never seen anyone about it so i'm not 100 percent sure it, it's definitely something that's stayed with me uh you know i think about it a, little, it a lot because how can you not i was going to ask because you mentioned that someone should continue with it if they think that they are doing the right thing and they should stop if they do not have the capacity for it and i wanted to know did you consider yourself a good person Oh, no. I mean, how can you consider yourself a good person if you're, like, killing people? It's just, like, a... It's a weird place to be in. Like, uh... I don't know. It's a, it's a, it's a hard question. I don't know if I can ever, like, atone for being part of a murderous military complex. There's one specific story about... We had been tracking this guy for, like, a few days at this point. We'd been trying to get him every day, and he was a bad dude. Like, super, super bad dude. Did terrible things to, uh, to, to civilians, to American soldiers, planted IEDs, had this whole network under him. Not a nice person, right? We'd been trying to catch this guy. On this day, we had him. The previous days, we did not have what's called a plus one. A plus one is whenever you're signed off to shoot your target that you can shoot him plus one other person that's with him because he's known to be this bad chances are this collateral damage isn't going to matter that day we had a plus one and we shot a hellfire missile at him and killed him and his like 10 to 11 year old kid who was with him and that's probably the one that i think about the most because that's like uh, that's some fucked up shit like you i definitely played a hand and this kid dying who had nothing to do with anything. And so that's a really hard thing to reconcile with yourself. And right after that is whenever the government shutdown happened. And th that is what weighed on my decision to not return back to let my clearance lapse and to go back to college and get away from all of that shit. What are you studying now? <laughs> this is going to sound so typical. But a uh, graphic design, so like art, basically, you know. Do you feel more satisfied with your life right now or uh, back when you were doing all uh, of this? De uh, definitely now. Like it's way, way more lighthearted and uh, way more fun. The good thing is like I don't get nervous very much in school when I have to like present stuff because when you're briefing generals about nuclear capabilities, art school doesn't really measure up in terms of like how nervous you would be i guess if you had a kid and they wanted to also join the military what would you be telling them i i would tell them it's it's a uh, it can be very rewarding i hope you don't ever feel the need to have to join some people just aren't made for it like some people aren't made for the military uh, at the end of the day i don't think i probably was made for it i think i faked it long enough to where I made it out of it. Um, if that's something that my child would want to do, I, it would be a hard thing for me. But I think I'm, I'm a big fan of letting people make their own choices, I think. So I'm going to tell you all a funny thing. So whenever you're, like, getting out, my security officer, the guy who reads you in and out of all of these various top-secret programs that you read into, he had... Do you know the thing from Men in Black, the flasher? 
Yes. He had one of those, like, like I mean, from the movie, it was a prop, but it blinked, and he did that. Like, after he reads you out, he's like, all right, you officially do not know any of this stuff anymore. Legally, you don't know any of this classified information. And he pulls up his little, the little fucking flasher, and he blinks it, and I was like, oh, my God. <laughs> you, you think, like, for a second, well, that's real? <laughs> but it was just a toy that he had, but, God, I mean, that guy loved his job. Like, I bet he loved getting to do that. Oh, <laughs> oh. <laughs> the men in black got him. If you could tell everyone in the world one thing, what would it be? Mm. Don't be a dick to people. And that includes killing them, probably. Your avatar is very fitting. You're a bird who never flies. Oh. God damn, that is deep. <laughs>